Ready to worship the Lord this morning? Amen? Amen. Let's stand this morning and let's invite the presence of the Holy Spirit in our service today. We have some guests. We want you to get around, shake some hands, and we're going to worship the Lord this morning. Amen? Amen? We serve a risen Savior. Amen? He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? <laughs> Father, today we worship you and we honor you and give you thanks and praise for this day that you have given us. A day that you have made that we will rejoice and be glad in it. So, Father, I pray this morning, let the presence of your Holy Spirit be in our service today. And everything we say and do, let it be about you this morning, Jesus. And we give you honor and praise and thanks in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's get around, shake some hands, and the ladies are going to lead us in some worship this morning. Amen.
Give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. Give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Are you redeemed this morning? I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen? Hallelujah. His redemption draweth nigh. Hallelujah. He's redeemed me from the hand of the enemy. Where would we be without Jesus today? Where would we be without the blood of the Lamb? Where would we be without His infinite mercy and His grace? Hallelujah. If church is a building to you, then you need to get redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Because we are the church. Amen? Hallelujah. We come to a building, but we are the church, the people, the sheep of His pasture. Amen? Hallelujah. Man, there's something in there that we can rejoice about and know that He is able to do more than what we could ever imagine or ask. Amen? Praise God. Hallelujah for His hand. His wonderful mercy, His redemptive power. Thank God for the blood of the Lamb. Amen? The Bible says whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? Church, it's time to get our shout on. Amen? It's time to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's still much work to be done in our country. Amen? Praise God, His hand was on the election. We know him whom we believe, and I'm persuaded that He is able, but we need to continue to pray for our country. Amen? Pray that God would give wisdom to our president-elect. Amen? Hallelujah. And thank God. Thank God for His hand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you excited today to be in the house of the Lord? Are you excited to serve Jesus? Amen? Give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're never to be ashamed of the gospel. Praise God. Amen. Then the ushers will come forward. We want to take up our morning tithes. And turn with me to John chapter 6. Amen. There's a lot going on in the house of the Lord. Amen. It's good to have fellowship together. Amen. I love one of my favorite verses in God's Word is how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell in the house of the Lord. Amen? All together. One, two, three. Wow. Amen. Hallelujah. I love how it's all offset like a chorus. Amen? We got the alto section. We got the... Amen. John chapter 6. And we're going to be looking today, I want to talk to you about a message entitled Duty versus Desire. Duty versus Desire. John chapter 6, starting at verse number 35. Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you, that you also have seen me and believe not. All that the Father gives me shall come to me, and him that comes to me I will in no wise cast out. For I come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the Father's will which also has sent me, that all of us he had given to me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which sees the Son and believes on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Father, I pray today that the reading of your word would become life to what we walk out in our flesh. I pray today that we would understand the importance of desire in our hearts versus duty as a believer. And I pray this in Jesus' name this morning. Amen.
God's word is filled with so many tremendous promises, amen? So many great things that God has filled his word for us to lay hold of, amen? But I believe that every one of us in this house today, every human soul, whichever existed, has been shaped to should have a desire to long for the Lord Jesus Christ. As a result, we may avoid God out of the fear born out of our shame, our sin, ignorance, or pride. But if we understand what we really want, we will discover a longing to be connected to God above everything else. Amen? He created us for fellowship. He created us for a purpose, to worship Him. Amen? Our desire should be to worship the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen? Most of us sense what it means to be hungry for God. I want to really communicate to you this morning <coughs> the importance of what we went through on Sunday night, October 30th. I firmly believe the Holy Spirit showed up in such a real and evident way in this place. We saw a tremendous move of God's Holy Spirit upon the body of Christ as everybody was interjecting and sharing because we heard the heart of the church. Amen? And this, my friends, today, I want to communicate to you in such a real and relevant way that you will totally understand the concept of personal versus religious. Duty versus desire. Showing up at the house of God, we have a responsibility. Not a duty, but a responsibility, a God-given responsibility born in our hearts through desire to worship a true and living God. Not to be part of a religious fraternal institution. Victory Lane Assembly of God never changed a person's life. Jesus Christ did. He used the vehicle of the church, this beautiful facility that he's given us, to worship him in. Amen? But if we merely worship in the confines of this brick and mortar and don't take it outside the four walls of the church, then all we're doing is sitting on the premises and not standing on the promises. We are not locked in and focused on what it means to have personal relationships. Amen? Think about it every day. You go to work. You have a personal relationship either with your boss or if you're a boss with your employees. You talk to them, right? You, you give them instruction. You give them detail. There's an agenda to follow, amen, and you expect them to follow that, amen, because it's a set of rules that the company has established. Well, in the same way as our life and our relationship with Christ if we don't eat, we starve. We simply become religious and we lose the passion to really worship the true and living God. Because then this book just becomes a set of rules. It doesn't become life-changing. It has to be life-changing. So it has to be born out of desire. So most of us know what it is to hunger for the Lord. The Azusa Street Revival, it was birthed in California in April of 1906 and continued until 1915. Nine years of God pouring out His Spirit, thousands of lives changed, people filled with the infilling of the Holy Spirit, people that were healed. William Seymour, who's an African-American evangelist, led that Azusa Street Revival at that time. But it happened in a spirit of healthy hunger. A hunger to really know God above everything else. And that's what underlines our value of worship as it means to enjoy being in His presence. And perhaps the most critical value or values here at Victory Lane Assembly of God is that we would seek to be a church where our worship of God remains dynamic and defining who we are 
not by what we sing, but by what we live. And where our lives become increasingly centered and satisfied in God's love and favor. But most of us also sense how easy such passion can wane. Jesus said the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth and the desires for other things come in and choke out the word, making it the seed that God plants unfruitful. That's what the Bible says in Mark 4, 19. Therefore, the challenge we face in staying connected to God involves staying connected to our most fundamental longing, that we are so stimulated by our outer sense that we can hardly hear our inner soul crying out. You see, I believe the tragedy of modern man is not that he knows less and less about the meaning of his own life, but it bothers him less and less. And we're seeing that with the morale of this country. People have a sheared conscience. They have no sense of right or wrong. They have no sense of morality. They have no sense of fear of God. They have no sense of authority of police officers and judges and court. They have no sense of authority anymore. There's a sheer conscience in America that's happening today. But of course, we see a spiritual hunger at work today. But far too easily, it settles for a sense of transcendence without pursuing the very substance of what God provides for us through his word. When we lose a connection to our deepest longing, we lose our address, for it's such longings that will lead us home. Amen? We lose out the contact of why we were born to have fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Why God created us. That's a message that should be easily portrayed to those that are lost and dying without Jesus Christ. That's one of the fundamental core values that we'll focus on tonight. Has your passion waned for the Lord? If our passion has waned, then we need to ask the spirit of revival to revive our hearts that it's born out of desire and not duty and obligation. And it becomes that fundamental truth that we stand on and live by. So in John 7, 37, Christ offers this good news. On the last day and the greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood in a house in a loud voice, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. What is your conviction? What is your passion? What is your desire? Conviction versus commitment. My set of convictions that I believe, well, they don't love me. They, 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 they don't understand. I, I'm not loved by anybody. Well, John 3.16 tells me, for God so loved. Amen? I can't get over this area of my life. I'm battling and I'm struggling and I'm having a difficult time and the enemy's just coming in like a flood. There's no condemnation to them which are in Christ. There's a promise and a set of convictions in God's word that he calls us to live by, that we have a desire that we serve him, not out of duty, but obligation that we, the King of kings and the Lord of lords died for me. Amen? He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to do the will of his Father. And if anyone is thirsty, we talk about speak of hunger in a similar way than to proclaim the very bread of life. If anyone is thirsty or hungry, if such senses are stirred, then we need to come to him because he's promised to fill us, amen, with his presence. Hallelujah. Praise God for the unchanging hand and unchanging word of God. So, if we feel a loss, which we long for God to satisfy, we may fear allowing ourselves to feel such needs, fearing that such a focus will only lead to despair. I don't want to get any more in touch with the emptiness in my life. It's dark and it's depressing, and if I want to be happy, I should avoid what makes me feel sad. 
You see, but Jesus had no intention, church, of leaving us in despair. Amen? He's simply stating the nature of hunger here. That hunger by nature, a pain that leads to pleasure. Hunger is the sensation that allows us to connect with food. We should value our spiritual hunger as we do our physical hunger. Amen? I woke up this morning and I wish I had an Almond Joy sitting beside my bed. Sometimes I feel like a nut, but sometimes I'm not. But there becomes more of a sense of spiritual hunger. Do I have a spiritual hunger, a deep desire to learn from the things of God? Hallelujah. What happens when we ignore physical hunger? We grow weak, disoriented, and most danger dangerously of all, we can lose our appetite altogether. Reverse that to the spiritual side of things. If we don't read this word, we don't have fellowship with other believers, we don't talk to our Heavenly Father, we starve ourselves spiritually. We wither up and die and we don't produce fruit. Is that God's desire for us as believers? It's quite the opposite. I just don't like the songs that the worship team sing, so I'm not going to worship. That's your preference. But are you worshiping out of duty, or are you worshiping out of desire? Worship is the entrance ramp to receiving the Word of God. And worship is not something we do, it's something we live. There's all kinds of styles of worship out there. Just as there's all kinds of different versions of God's word out there. Just as there's all kinds of various different outreaches that are out there. But if we simply come to this place and we think that we show up because we're doing God a favor, we're not. Then we're simply coming out of duty, not desire. Trust me, there are some Sunday mornings I wake up and I say, good morning, Lord. Or, Lord, is it morning? There becomes a difference, though. So what is my desire? So my question to us today is this. Is our hunger for God born out of duty or desire? You see, Jesus declares a transforming truth in the answer to that very particular question in Mark thir Matthew 13, 44. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then his joy went and sold all he had, and he bought that field. What does that tell us about cultivating our hunger for God? This, that our hunger for God is not born of duty, but desire. God seeks in the heart and soul of everyone he created with a longing for him. Recognition of need which he can only satisfy. This word, church, I trust this morning if you know Christ as your personal Savior, this word is alive in your heart. This word is alive in your life. Amen? We are not going to get to heaven on the coattails of the, our family members that maybe knew the Lord Jesus Christ in a personal way. We're not going to get to heaven being religious. We're not. It's just not going to happen. You're not going to get to heaven by showing up at church on Sunday morning every Sunday 52 times in a year. You're not going to get to heaven that way. The Bible is very clear in Acts 4.12. There is no other name a man must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Does that mean that we're perfect when we come to Jesus? Uh, no, not by a long shot. The Bible says we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. Amen? But we have to have a desire that we're going to serve the Lord. We have to have a hunger and a passion that we're going to serve the Lord. Amen? Sin is pleasurable for a season, but it has its consequences.
this past week, we we had a some of us that are here this morning had a, a, a friend that we've known at Lake County Speedway that was killed this past week on River Street 84 in Davis. He had a trailer that was behind him. Or he had his trailer that he was towing with his truck and there was a car in front of him and uh, there was an ambulance coming in the other direction and the car in front of him slammed on its brakes and to avoid hitting, he went left to center and struck the ambulance head on. He died on impact. 52, 52 years old. But I know he knew the Lord Jesus Christ. Do you know why? Because uh, there were some Saturday nights that I went and I would sit with him and talk with him. And I invited him to church and he said to me, he said, hey preacher, he said, I've been going to church all my life and I know Christ as my personal Savior, but thanks for the invitation. So I know. But 52 years old, he leaves behind a wife and two boys. His son was in the car with him and just, he broke his leg, but he watched his father die right in front of him. The guy was so popular that this week at the funeral, uh, Avery Dennison there in Painesville where he worked for over 20 years is shutting the company down so they can go to the funeral. But personal, we're talking personal relationship. A desire to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Religion will not get you to heaven. You walk out that door and die today, you better know Jesus. Not that our families knew Jesus, but you better know Jesus. That's the only way to get to heaven, church. A repentive heart to know him. So let's bring this to a close this morning as, as now all of us are all bummed out, right? No, amen. He's not suffering anymore, amen? He's home free with the Lord. But yes, in our, in our, in our flesh we grieve because we've lost a friend. But God wants our enjoyment. He wants our delight. Our souls are to be stirred, not merely by a sense of obligation, but desperation for the Lord. Not merely by a sense of duty, but desire. And we have to overcome our merely dutiful approach to God. We can't cultivate a hunger for God born from duty, apart from desire. Can't do it. Got to have a desire to serve the Lord. When you share the gospel, when you share your faith with other people that don't know Christ, you're doing it out of desire. Not because, it, it, yes, it's a command, for go ye therefore and make disciples, amen? That's what the Bible tells us to do. But we have a desire that we're going to do that. We have a desire that we're going to reach out into the hearts and lives of people to come to faith in Jesus Christ. So how do we cultivate our hunger for God? Let me give you just three quick reasons. Our sense, the desire God placed in our hearts. Sense the desire that God placed in our hearts. Desires which can help us stay connected to the Lord. His word, prayer, fellowship. Those are the things that we build on. The second thing, see the signs that God has given of himself. Romans 1.20 says, For since the creation of the world, God's invisible qualities... His eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood from what has been made, so that the men are without excuse. And the third thing is seek the deeper heart of God, now present through Jesus Christ. For I know the plan that I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans to prosper and not to harm you. A hope and a future. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me and when you seek me with all of your heart. Church, is your relationship this morning born out of desire to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Do you walk into this house on Sunday mornings with an expectation? If you don't, let me challenge you and encourage you 
to maybe start that come next week? Would you ask the Holy Spirit that you, when you come into God's house to worship, you will come with a desire, with an expectancy to receive from the Holy Spirit what he's going to do? If you don't come with an expectancy, then you're just coming merely out of duty. Every time I get together on a Sunday morning with my brothers and my sisters, my family, as your under-shepherd, the pastor of the church, I come with an expectancy that I'm going to see God do some great things in the hearts and lives of his people. Amen? I'm going to watch the Holy Spirit do a work in hearts and lives. <clears throat> I just had a conversation with somebody this past week on an area that they were battling and struggling with. And our responsibility is to encourage, not discourage. Not give a hand out, but give a hand up. To encourage the body of Christ, amen? To pray with them when they're going through a difficult time. Amen? That's what we're here to do. But I love when we get together because I, I watch the presence and the Holy Spirit work in the hearts and lives of God's people. And you know, it's a fascinating thing. Because you know why? The Bible tells us that. We are a peculiar people. A people that should show forth, hallelujah, get your praise on, the praises of him who's called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And you know what the great thing is? He's used the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And the weak things to overthrow those things which are mighty. Hallelujah. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Amen? The devil's not going to keep me down. No matter if I had a week from hell, it's not going to keep me down. Why? Because I serve a risen Savior. And he's in the world today. Amen? I know that he is living whatever men may say. Hallelujah. Because I see his hand of mercy. Hallelujah. And just the time I need him, he's always near. Amen? He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. Amen? He walks with me. He talks with me. Hallelujah. Rock of ages. The great I am. The Alpha, the Omega. The beginning of the end. The Lion of Judah. The Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world desires to change our hearts and our lives. But we have to simply come to him. He says, and here's the great thing. No condemnation to them which are in Christ. Here's the great thing about the promise of God. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and here's the promise. I'm going to give you rest. Why? My yoke is easy. Amen? He tells us right there. What's stopping us from coming to Father's house? Some of us need a fresh touch and a move of God's Holy Spirit. Some of us need to have revival in our own life. You know what? You want people to, to look at you and see that you're having a benefit? You tell them you're having a benefit for the Lord. Amen? You're just having a fit with Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen? That's a good kind of fit to have. When I gave my heart my life to Jesus Christ in June of 1991, I was laying on the carpet at Painesville Assembly of God blowing snot. Now, I know that's not real edifying and wholesome talk, right? From the world. But you know what? That's what it took for me. To come out of that lifestyle of what God delivered me from, from drug and alcohol addiction, and pornography, I had to lay on the floor and let the Holy Spirit do a work in my brain and my heart, and I didn't care how long I was blowing out snot. I got up, and there was a huge wet spot right on the carpet. But it was good. But as my relationship, amen, thanks, Larry. Praise God, Larry got it. But you know, the thing for us is that we need to have revival in our heart and our life. God, revive us. Spirit of revival, amen. So I want to serve the Lord out of desire, not duty. 
And I want you to know this. I make you this promise that, that as your pastor, you need prayer for something, call. We'll pray with you. We'll encourage you. I may not have all the answers. I'll tell you right now I don't have all the answers. But I know one who does. Amen? And I will encourage you. And I will uplift you. But no, let's serve the Lord out of desire. Amen? My wife and I are going to serve communion together. I'll be serving the men, and my wife will be serving the ladies of the church. We're going to come down to you in just a moment. But would you bow your heads with me as we close in prayer today? And I want to give an opportunity this morning for some of you that may be here you need a fresh move of God's Holy Spirit in your life. It's been a while since you've heard from God. It's been a while since you've communicated with Him. And you need God to just minister to your heart this morning. And before we take the Lord's Supper together, I want to give you an opportunity to search your heart. Because that's what the Bible tells us before we partake in the Lord's Supper. It also tells us that we want to give that invitation for those that need to come to faith in Jesus Christ. Maybe you have not personally confessed and repented, turned away from that old lifestyle, and you need to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life, fill me with your presence, and allow all that other stuff, I cast it into your hands, I cast it into that sea, and I ask for your forgiveness. Maybe there are some that are here like that this morning. But Billy, if, I could, if you could just roll something there for me, I appreciate that. I want to give you an opportunity this morning. First, for those that you need to come to faith in Jesus Christ. It's really simple. The Bible says we have to do our part. Will we take that step forward and say, Lord Jesus, I'm going to make a commitment today to step forward and accept you into my life. I don't have all the answers. But I know that when I leave here, I've done what you've asked me to do. You created me for fellowship for a purpose. You died for my sin. And I'm tired of living in my own strength. I'm tired of doing things my own way. And I'm ready to turn my life around and allow you to be the leader of my life. If that's you this morning, and you need to recommit or rededicate or for the first time, come to faith in Jesus Christ, we want to give you that opportunity this morning. We have people here that will pray with you, and we want to encourage you today. So if you're here today and you'd like to do that, would you slip up a hand, and we're going to have people that are going to come and pray with you this morning. If that's anybody here this morning, you need to come to faith in Christ. next one is this if it's been a while since you've heard from the Lord oh pastor I, I get in my car I pop in my CD and I worship the Lord I get home and you know I don't have time to pray with my spouse I don't have time to pray with my kids I, I don't have time to do those things because I've worked a long day I and you know, if that becomes our life, then we need to reevaluate those things. We need to take time to know that we're hearing from the Lord. 